We're opening up the mailbag. Jason Tatum playing big. A Christoph Porzingis comparison to Kevin Durant. And why do those guys keep flaring out to the corners on two-on-one fast breaks? I'll talk about it all right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. There, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making the show part of your daily routine. I'm here for you Monday through Friday with a free, free, fresh podcast. Drop directly to your device if you subscribe. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Get onto that YouTube page. Get into the comment section. Get notified there. Ring the bell. So when I drop a new video, you'll know. Do that for me, please. Uh, I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I'm a beat writer. I'm at the games. I'm at the practices. I'm there with inside look. In fact, you're starting to see in some of my shorts on YouTube, some video from post-game practices, post-game drills, some interesting things. So it's a full content experience here on Locked On Celtics. Uh, Celtics had a couple of practices over the weekend. Nothing major, nothing crazy. Rajon Rondo was there. So uh, that was nice. We got to talk to Rondo. He basically... Following in Paul Pierce's footsteps, they the Celtics put out the call. Rajon Rondo was among those who responded. He was there again on Sunday. So a nice weekend in Boston for Rajon. Uh, we heard about how he's gone back to Kentucky. He's trying to get his communications degree. Uh, he's coaching his kids in basketball and volleyball. And, you know, he eventually wants to get into coaching. I don't know if at the NBA level, but whatever. He's done playing. His playing days are over. So uh, he's now looking to transition. And I don't know if it's going to be – as an NBA level head coach. But anyway, nice to see Rajon Rondo. That was kind of cool. Uh, the Celtics signed Nathan Knight uh, as a two way guy, wing, uh, another one of the guys who had hit the best night of his career against the Boston Celtics. So Brad Stevens said, Yes, I want him. Uh, and then he proceeded to try to kill me today in practice. He, he ran into me. I had my back to the court. He was in a one on one drill. He kind of, got pushed out of bounds. He ran into me. I'm just joking around about trying to kill me, but my lawyer will be contacting you, Nathan Knight. No. Uh, mailbag time. I figured it's while we have it, while we have the opportunity, people keep sending in the mailbag questions. They go to uh, johncorrales.com slash mailbag, johncorrales.com slash mailbag. And people have been submitting questions. They just keep coming in. I don't get a chance to answer all of them. There are a lot, but I figured let's get into some of them here because we have the opportunity to do so. Once the season gets going, it's kind of tough to do all of these, but we'll keep doing them while we can. Today's show brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Malachi asks, is it just me or does Jason Tatum look like a true power forward this season, Jason Tatum looks big. He's, I've been saying he's bigger. He's, he put on some muscle over the summer. He's, but I've been saying all along over the past few seasons, like he's, he's grown into this amazingly, uh, big and talented, uh, NBA player. And he should be playing big this preseason. There's more of an emphasis on him playing out of the post. Sam Cassell has been working with him in the post. And we've, I've written a story, just a quick video breakdown of him in the post. I have a story coming out on Boston Sports Journal, which, by the way, side note, go to Boston Sports Journal if you want my stuff free for the next week. And then if you want to subscribe, use the code Celtics23 and you can get 20% off the annual subscription. So you can read my stuff at, over there. And what my story, my Monday story is going to be about Sam Cassell and Jason Tatum working together. So yeah, Sam has been working with Jason and they've been doing a lot more back to the basket stuff. Tatum is a big dude and backing smaller guys down should be a part of his offense. And there are a lot of smaller guys than him now because 
he's not six eight. There's no way he's six eight. He's six ten probably, and he's got those big broad shoulders, and he's a strong dude, and he's finally playing like that. I have been saying for a long time, my theory on Jason Tatum is that he has spent so long in his career being big and skinny that he's played skinny, which means gliding past contact, not absorbing contact. Because when you're big and skinny, you take a hit, you feel it. So now that he's big and he can absorb the contact, I think it's taken him a little while to realize like, oh, oh, this is what I can do in this body. So yeah, this preseason, he's playing big. He's playing like a guy his size should. And he looks, he looks every bit a power forward. So however you want to classify him, it doesn't matter. He's a wing. So you've got ball handlers, wings, and bigs. He's a wing. He's a big wing. Uh, I wouldn't call him a big, but he's a big wing. And he can get down there and block shots and rebounds and all of that. It's. I'll say this about Jason Tatum and his size. He now has the potential for his game to age really, really well. Because as he gets into not 26, but 36, he'll have this back-to-the-basket game. He'll have a, a mid-range game. He can be a big. You're going to see Jason Tatum playing. He can play till 37, 38, 39 as a center in the NBA. He could be the next Al Horford. Uh, I'm fast-forwarding along, you know, a long way here, but that's what this type of stuff can do for him. He can, he can really extend his career that way. Dell gets into a question about another big Kristaps Porzingis who says Kristaps is basically playing the same role as Kevin Durant played in Golden State. Instead of Brad trading Jalen for KD, he kept Brown and traded for a cheaper KD in KP. The future is extremely bright with uh, Brad in the chair. Okay. I I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to go that far. Uh, I wouldn't say that Porzingis is a poor man's Durant. Um, but but I get what you're saying as far as specific role. Whatever you want to compare him to, I, I'm not going to make the KD comparison, but I do think that what Porzingis is doing here in Boston is different than what he's done elsewhere. He's not trying to create. He's not trying to do too much. He's actually just content setting picks and reading the defense after that, oh, this is a popping situation. I'm just going to go out through the three-point line and get a wide-open shot. Oh, this is a rolling situation. Now I'm going to depend on my guard, who's really, really good at this, whoever it is, Drew Holiday, uh, Derek White. Depend on one of those guys, Peyton Pritchard, to force the big to step up. And when that big is either frozen or has to take a step forward, Porzingis just goes to the basket, alley-oop. So the options are there. Porzingis just doing that. He he just has to do the stuff that Rob did. And you know what? Porzingis is talented as a scorer. And he does the things that Rob did. And he can get the ball in those situations. We were talking before the season started about Rob coming in and developing a jump shot. Just get that 15-footer down. Well, Porzingis has a 15-footer and a 25-footer, and now you have to respect that. He can still set the same picks. He can still You can still run a lot of the same actions. It's just that when Porzingis reads that it's a, it's a pop, you can pop. You know, he can pop, and Rob couldn't, and that's, that's a big difference here, and it's, he's elite at that. So however you want to say it, Brad Stevens is definitely, he definitely knows what he's doing. I personally, I think that I agree with the last sentence here. The future is extremely bright with Brad in that chair. I think Brad Stevens is excellent in the front office. I think he's a great coach. I think he might be better as the president of basketball operations. Coming up next... Question about a two-on-one break and guys flaring out to the corner. Plus, a uh, question about Jalen Brown, a question about uh, the, the Celtics kind of going for it with extensions. Why won't they extend 
Derek White and Drew Holiday this season. We'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time app is going to get you those last minute tickets at the best possible price. Doesn't matter if you are, uh, it's a Saturday and you say, oh, you know what? I'm bored. Uh, what do we want to do tonight? Let's try this show. Oh, they just, you know, I heard about this show. Let's try that. Let's go to this sporting event. Open up the Game Time app. Very simple. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Uh, that all of those are, are very, uh, good reasons to download the game time app. You can see the seat before you buy it. So you know exactly what your view is going to be. The all in prices show your total upfront. So you don't think, Oh, I'm paying this much money for the tickets. You go to check out and you're like, Oh my God, I'm paying twice as much. No, you know what you're getting right away. You buy your tickets in two clicks. Very simple. Exclusive flash deals, sponsored deals, tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater. It's all there. Uh, with the zone deals, you pick the section. Game time picks the seats. You get an average of an 18% saving. So download the game time app, create an account, and here's the best part. Use the code LOCKDOWNNBA. You get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code LOCKDOWNNBA, L-O-C-K-E-D on NBA. LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, best price, lowest price, guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Thank you for taking me with you wherever you go. Uh, now, I would love it if you check out the Locked On NBA podcast. Hey, opening night's on Tuesday. I've got the Wednesday show. So I get to talk about opening night in the NBA with Jake Madison of Locked On Pelicans. So make sure you're checking that show out. Wherever you found this podcast, that podcast exists as well. Back to the mailbag, and this question comes from Bob. Can you please explain to me, I'm going to add the frustration in his voice, just the way it's written. Can you please explain to me why a two-on-one breakaway is good? Is a good play for one player to run in the corner and take a three? I know guys shoot about 40% on open threes, but what do they shoot on wide-open layups and dunks? Well, it's not the wide open layups and dunks that you have to worry about, Bob. It's the contested layups and dunks. Wide open layups, yeah. I think the Celtics, when they push the ball, they're going to be trying to get the wide open layups. They want to take wide open layups. The Celtics are, despite the uh, the the conception, the Celtics are willing to trade three point or three point attempts for layups, breakaways. But here's the rub. Contested layups are somewhere around 57%. Okay? That's when... So if you're going two-on-one and that person is back and you now have uh, a, a, a person who's able to contest that layup. Now, two-on-one, I still think you're if you do it right, you should get the open layup. But... Three on two, I can see a guy flaring out. That's okay because the contested layup is at 57%. Let's round it a little bit. The open corner three is about 39% from three. Well, 57%. If you shoot 100 shots at 57%, you score 114 points. If you shoot 100% of threes at 39%, you score 117 points. So, Wide open three versus contested layup. The math favors the wide open three. The issue here is that guys have to make the right rim reads. We talk about rim reads. You'll hear Joe Mazzulla talk about rim reads. When you hear that, they're talking about going up for the layup and reading the defense. Is that guy going to be able to contest your shot? If he's not, you got to read it and you got to read it quickly. And this is tough. You got to read it and you say, Do I have the open layup, the open dunk? If you do, then you take it. But if that guy's going to contest, if he's in a position to contest and you have an open teammate in the corner, you kick to the corner because the math favors the wide open corner three pointer. That's just what it is. So, it's a change from the past. It's absolutely a change from the past. And in a two-on-one situation, 
I would rather see both guys going towards the basket. I don't think a lot of two on ones are, are flare outs, but uh, maybe, maybe they are. It, it's, I'm sure there's going to be people who be like, Hey, you can't contest both of us. So let me go get that open corner three, but that's the math. That's the math. And, and this is why I did the show that said, let's, let's kill the corner three because that's not something people like to see. People don't like when you go two on one and one guy goes 22 feet away and you're like, well, why are you doing that? That doesn't look right. But if it was, if there was no corner three, then you would just go and then you take the contested layup because, because that's what's there. So, but that's the number that's, that's the math. Uh, Declan asks, um, first half of Tuesday's preseason game against the Knicks was mwah, so much offensive firepower on the team. And yet Jalen Brown seems to be going for early shot clock ISO plays losing his handle from time to time. Is that anything to worry about? Well, okay. I, I do think Jalen Brown, the, some of the turnovers this preseason have looked kind of rough. I'm not worried about it, but I don't like it. Um, some of the early offense, I think maybe Jalen gets a little bit too much crap for the early offense. Now, early offense is something I have to come around on the early offense shots because I sit there and have railed against them forever. But it, the, the thought process is if you're coming down the floor and your defender is below the three point line and backing up and you're stepping into a wide open pull up three pointer. Well, in all of the 24 seconds of a shot clock, Jalen Brown stepping into an in rhythm three pointer might be the best shot that you can get. If you, it's one of those, if you sign up for this possession, you freeze it and you go, okay, we're in this possession. We're going to get a wide open Jalen Brown three pointer. And people go, well, yeah, sign me up. And then the catch is, well, it's at, 17 seconds on the shot clock, 18 seconds on the shot clock. And people go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe you probe the defense a little bit and see if you can get a layup or something better, which is something I've said all along. And the fact is the, the early offense, because defenses are so good in the NBA nowadays that the early offense approaches – I have to get used to it. Like it does make sense. It does make sense. So Jalen gets some crap for that. He shouldn't because, uh, that's the strategy. That's what the coach wants. And I know it's frustrating, but also the Celtics want to take like a hundred shots per game. They want to win the possession battle. They want to go out there and put up a bunch of shots, which means some of them are going to have to be early. And sometimes that early shot clock jumper is the best one. I admit that I was wrong. I wasn't approaching it the right way. This is the current NBA way of thinking. Do I like it? Not necessarily, but this is how they think in the NBA. And I have to think like they think in the modern NBA. So you get the right information as to why. My job isn't to like or dislike it. If that's the way... The current approach is, a, and a, a current approach across the board, then I have to get on board with it because that's what teams are doing. Tony says, if Wick is willing to spend and Brad's going F them picks, what is the harm in extending both White and Holiday along with Tatum's extension next year? Um, so here's, there is no harm in doing it next year. There is the possibility that they won't get these extensions done before the deadline this offseason, before the season starts. Uh, and I think the deadline is coming soon for these guys. Don't be shocked if Holiday and White do not do not get extended before the season. My opinion, my feeling is Brad Stevens is making sure that he has all options available to him. If you extend Derek White now, 
should some weird, stupid, crazy trade possibility come up over the course of the season that Boston was like, oh God, we have to get in on this. And Derek White's our most tradable uh, player. If you extend him now, then you make him a poison pill contract, which means the uh, the team that trades for him when you're matching salaries, they count the average amount of all years remaining to him, which is the extension and next season. And so that number will be far and away above what he's making now. But Boston has to consider only what he's making this season. It makes matching salaries very difficult. Not that they, I think they're looking to, to trade him, but I'm just saying we just saw Drew Holiday become available in a weird, stupid, crazy scenario, and Boston was in position to pounce. I don't think Derek White is going to get traded. I don't think Boston would want to trade Derek White. They're not like, this is a great, great team. But if some team out there decides, hey, we're going to trade this incredibly amazing player, we're done, then it feels like having that bullet in the chamber, you want to be able to have that there. So it's not a, it's not a, because they want to or anything like that. My opinion, this is my opinion. You keep all options on the table. You don't extend him now. You extend him next summer and that's it. All right, we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Namayesh Keita, uh, some other team culture, uh, Terry Rozier. People want to get Terry Rozier on the team. That's not going to happen. I'll explain why next. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Uh, I've been saying bet against the Patriots. Uh, you probably shouldn't have done that this time around. What a finish to the Patriots. There are people who uh, probably took them and made themselves a nice, pretty penny over there on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Hey, if you're new to FanBook, you want to get in on it, no problem. Go, you bet $5, you'll get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Bet five, win or lose. They will give you $200 in bonus bets. So if you've been thinking about it, this is a great time to join. That option, uh, that that offer is really, really great. The app is super easy to use. You can, tons of sports options. You have, uh, you know, spreads, player props, over-unders, futures. You can, you, Jason Tatum is plus 750 uh, on uh, FanDuel to, to win MVP. I like his chances. I like his chances. So, FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season. We're well into the NFL season. If you're just kicking it off now, that's fine too. Tip off the NBA season. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Just ask you if you're going to do it. Please gamble responsibly at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Josh Lloyd's going to help you win your league no matter what you probably want to get that advantage from Josh. Go find Josh in the fantasy basketball, lockdown fantasy basketball, wherever you found lockdown Celtics. Back to the mailbag here. Rapid fire. We got to feel like five questions left. Let's get these, let's get these done. Uh, Malachi asks with 15 guys on the roster, can we now take Namayesh Keita off the two way contract without releasing somebody? No, you need to get to 14 guys. So, uh, but I'm sure they're going to get down to 14 soon uh, because they got, um, oh, what's his name? They got somebody they can wave. I forget his name, but uh, yeah, they'll get down to 14. There's no rush to to take Kata off the two-way deal. In fact, I would say keep him on it because he's, it doesn't change anything. He's still available to you. Keep him on it. Keep him off the books. Keep. You, you're already paying him five hundred thousand dollars to be on the two way. Why rush to put something on the books where you're you're paying the tax on him? So don't do it now. Do it later. Go to the take it to uh, game fifty, and when he's out of eligibility and you want to upgrade him, then you can upgrade him then if you want. But it doesn't change his availability in Boston. So you can still play him. You can still use him. The, However many minutes, start them if you want. Doesn't matter. Oliver, 
What other teams do you believe have a similar culture to the Celtics? Are there any teams you believe have a better culture than the Celtics? Better? No. Uh, I think the Celtics have done a really good job of rebuilding things that got deteriorated in the 90s by a person whose name should be bleeped every time it's mentioned. I think the Celtics have built, obviously, a strong tradition. The I don't think anybody is better than the Celtics when it comes to their culture. Now, when you hear the word culture, people say heat culture. And we can mock it, whatever you want, but I will also say that it's real. What they've done in Miami is amazing. The fact that they are in position to be this good with some of the players that they have. I mean, obviously they have Jimmy Butler, who is awesome, especially in the playoffs. Bam out of bio is great. Uh, they have some, some good, they have a good supporting cast uh, and they get the most out of their supporting cast. The heat culture is real. Uh, shout out to Pat Riley. Shout out to, to uh, Spolstra. The, those guys have just, the way they operate is pretty amazing. So got to shout them out. And I hate to say it, but like the Lakers, the Lakers are right there, right? They've got the banners. They've got the history. They've got the battles with the Celtics. They've got the, the greats. They can, they can get some really big time names back at their practice facility too, if they want. So those are, you know, that's a team that has a pretty good, you know, culture. It's different. It's, you know, it's very LA, it's very Hollywood, but they, they have, they have cachet. They definitely have cachet and that's good. I like that. I actually like that they do because that's, it's somebody to kind of push you from the other side of the country. So I like that. Um, everyone else it's tough. Like they're, Oh, the Spurs, the Spurs, the Spurs with pop. Definitely. I think the Spurs, I, I respect the San Antonio Spurs. Um, if I, if the, the Boston Celtics went away and there was a team that I wanted to be around more than, you know, anyone else, I probably would pick San Antonio. Just, I love pop. I, I, you know, I don't care if he's, you know, tough with the media. That's fine. I like being pushed that way too. So, and I just think they've done it right. They've done it right over in San Antonio. So that's, I, I probably, my people might think I would have picked New Orleans because that's the city I would want to go to. I kind of would, I don't know if I could live and work in New Orleans. That would be, that would be very difficult. Jonas says, uh, semi-related Celtics question. What would it take to get Terry Rozier off the Hornets? The answer is $23 million worth of salary, which Boston uh, doesn't have. Well, unless you want to trade Derek White, and I don't. I'm also much lower on Terry Rozier than other people. A lot of people I know around Boston, they like Terry Rozier. I kind of don't. I kind of don't. I'm sorry. He's He's been on the Hornets for a while. If he's that good, why hasn't he had any sort of positive impact? He, he doesn't. I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry. I know pl plenty of people like Terry Rozier. People forget that he just went full scorched earth on the Celtics after that season before he signed with or, or was traded, signed and trade to Charlotte. It was, he was a problem. Everybody blamed Kyrie for good reason, but Terry Rozier was a problem in that locker room. He was not happy. So yeah, I pass on Terry Rozier and because he makes $23.2 million, it's impossible to get there without giving up more than anybody would think possible because Derek White is a better player than Terry Rozier by far. Ryan asks, I was wondering about Joe Missoula's assistant scrimmages. <laughs> How are those going to be now that Sam Cassell's on, on the staff? Do you think he won't be allowed to play? Well, I don't know what I, I'm going to try to show up early at, at a game and early enough to, to maybe catch one of those because they play before games. Um, is Sam Cassell going to be allowed to play? Well, he's 53. So I would think that that's a leveler. Like 
as as good as he is, I mean, he's a former All Star, he's three time champ, but he's fifty three. And as a fifty year old man myself, I can tell you, playing ball at fifty three, not that easy. Not that easy. The bones they don't like playing ball at fifty three. So would would Sam play? Yeah, maybe, but he wouldn't be. He's he's probably still better than everybody else, but it won't be like old school Sam Cassell coming in and just you know rolling those assistants. It would be it would be tough, and he'd probably just sit there and be like, "Yeah, I'm just going to shoot." And let's wrap up here with uh, Dustin, who says, "I know anything is potable has come to an end, but can we still get the yearly predictions podcast with you, Sam and Jay?" Answer is yes. Answer is yes. We are going to record that. Uh, they still have their podcast. It's just called Still Pot- Potable, and they're doing it on uh, Patreon. If you want to pay them to uh, listen to their podcast, go for it. Uh, this podcast is free, and so it's your choice. Pl- plenty of people want to pay for it. That's great. You can do that. Um, so that's what those guys, the, the, the other question is, what are they doing next? You can follow them. I love Jay. I love Sam. They've got some stuff cooking over there. Uh, no problem. People want to listen to that podcast. You want to listen to it first. I prefer you listen to this show first. If you want to listen to this show second. Okay. Whatever. If you don't want to pay for their show, got a free show right here every Monday through Friday. And like next week when the Celtics play the, uh, or this week, I should say when the Celtics play Miami on Friday night, bonus podcast Friday night. So this week you're getting six podcasts for me, right? So Plenty of content, and it's all free. Plenty of free content here on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. So hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you subscribe. Um, yeah, I love those guys, but this show's free. If it's free, it's for me, right? And uh, that's all I got to say about that. Subscribe. Watch the show on YouTube. Get onto that YouTube page. Get into the comment section. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about my answers. Would you say something differently? Do you disagree with me? I'd love to hear it if you disagree with me. Disagreements are fine. Uh, Do all that. Subscribe. And if you're an everydayer, I would love it if you share the podcast. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.